things to me out of the tree. Yes. Or you're not going to get fruit, and you're going to get cut off. The question is always, 
where where do you want to be in, in this part? So let's talk about some people who got cut off. We can start at the beginning. Lucifer. Lucifer was an archangel. He was a shining star, one of the closest angels to God himself. But when he decided, I'm going to raise myself above God Almighty and got a third of the angels that followed him, he was cut off. He was thrown out of heaven with no way to return. That's his anger with us. <laughs> we still have an opportunity to be forgiven. We're not cut off. But the devil, Lucifer, who became the devil, is done. It has been cast down. Yeah. Adam. Adam made in the likeness of God, given dominion over earth. Then he decides that he's going to rebel against God and be disobedient and eat of the tree that he was told not to. Adam is cut off. He is put out of the garden. The garden is locked. There was no return for him there. But through Adam's sin, he lost our faith up until Jesus Christ, that we all were in the same boat as he was. And we have Judas. Judas. He was trained by Jesus. He walked with Jesus. He healed those who were sick. He cast out demons. But at the end, Judas decides to go against Jesus, and he was cast out. And ultimately, he meant destruction. Now, those of you who are bearing fruit, you're going to be pruned for more fruit. Every branch that bears fruit, you prune that it may bear more fruit. God pruned our life and not remain removing distractions, sin, even comfort zones to help us grow and bear richer fruit. Job, God called him a blameless man, but Job lost everything, his wealth, his family, his health. Yet through his pain, through holding on to God, even when his wife wanted him to just curse God, he held on. And when it was over, God restored him to so, some of what he had. Abraham, 75 years old, God promised him a son. At age six, due to their impatience, they decided to go ahead and do it their way. And he had a child through Hagar. Yet at 100 years old, he was told at 75, 25 years later, he finally has his son. Wonderful. Great. Within 15 years, this man had been waiting for this child for all of his life. Within 15 years, God tells him to sacrifice his son to learn. Without hesitation, Abraham wakes up the next morning and takes his son on the trip to get to the mountain. He ties him up, he sets him up, and he is about to sacrifice him as God told him. But he obeyed. God stopped him because Abraham later on, we're told in the New Testament, that Abraham believed because God told him he would be the father of many nations, that if he killed his son in that sacrifice, God would raise him. That's belief. What do you believe in? So we got Joseph. Joseph had a number of great dreams, didn't he? But he was betrayed by his brothers, sold into slavery, accused of rape, put into prison. But he kept this attitude. He did not have an attitude against his keepers as he was in jail. David's asking people, why are you so sad? He, he was passed over. Things were done to him. And he's asking you, why are you so sad? Because he maintained his connection with his source. And that's what God had told him. And then he became the second in command in Egypt. He saved his family, and he saved many nations who were on the verge of starvation. Paul, he was beaten. Remember, these are people being proved. Paul, beaten, shipwrecked, imprisoned. He bore the fruit of life devoted to spreading the gospel. As a matter of fact, he wrote 20% the New Testament. And he did most of that in prison. Mm -hmm. These are saints. These are people who are bearing fruit that God is pruning so that they can bear more fruit. Right, okay. Keep it over, and we have 
of Jesus. Remember when Jesus was baptized and comes out of the water, and God says, this is my beloved son, in whom I am well pleased. That was great. But what happened then? He's led by the Holy Spirit into the wilderness to be tried and tested. Even Jesus is tested. Meaning you, you, you can guarantee you will be tested. There's no way to escape it. There's no way. But how you deal with those tests is the important part. Who you stay connected to is the important part. That's right. So Jesus, when he was tempted, he stood firm, countering the devil with the word of God. Man shall not live by bread alone, and worship the Lord your God only. And through the power of God's word, Jesus overcame, and his faith was unshaken. Connecting to the story. Let's get a better understanding of how connected Jesus was to the story. God, think about it. Jesus fulfilled over 300 prophets. He saved, he saved, he had a sinless life, he taught the kingdom, the kingdom of God, he cast out demons, he walked on water, he did all these things. He was anointed by the Holy Spirit. But when his hour came to die and lay down his life, what was he doing in the Garden of Gethsemane? Come on now. He was praying, and this is what he said, my soul is overwhelmed with sorrow to the point of death. Stay here and keep watching it. Then three times he prayed, Father, if it is possible, may this cup be taken from me, yet not as I will, but as you will. He goes back again, Father, if it is possible, may this cup be taken from me, yet not as I will, but as you will. As he's praying, he starts to sweat blood. He goes back a third time. Father, if it is possible, may this cup be taken from me, yet not as I will, but as you will. Total surrender. So my question is, why would Jesus ask that when he was born and he came here to die on the cross? Why would he, why would he ask for that to be removed? Earlier in my life, I would think that yeah, he was concerned about all the pain that he was going to have to go through yeah. on the cross. Yes. The whippings and all these different pieces. But as I grew older, I started to understand that this cry for it to be removed had nothing to do with the pain on the cross. <clears throat> it had to do with his connection to God. Remember, he was a lamb of God. He had never been separated from the Father. Throughout on the cross, when he had received all of our sins, God had to turn his back on him because he was no longer acceptable. That was the pain he did not want to endure. The rest didn't matter. But this separation, for what, however long it was, it was a short period of time, he did not want to give up that connection. Because his connection with God was everything, period. That's it. So I have a question to you. How much does it matter to you? How much does that connection matter to you? Come on, man. If you have been cut off because of sin, will you reconnect? As my mom would say, if you don't stop now, it's going to get worse. Right? If you, if you are cut off, you are going to hell. There's no other place. So if you need to reconnect today, reconnect today. Amen. This second, get back on it. Don't wait. Now is the time. For those who are being pruned and refined, if you're feeling the pain of pruning, hold on while God does a good work in you. I know you are tired. You're frustrated. And you just don't have the energy for all of the things that may be going on in your life. Some of you have suffered physical, mental, spiritual pain. But 
you must stay connected to the source. Trust the process and have faith that God is and will always be your only source. God is turning your trials into triumph, your pain into purpose. Hold on, because something greater is coming. Amen. In the name of Jesus, get it done today. If you don't have it, understand, if you sin, you can be forgiven, but you cannot loop in this process. You're taking a chance. God will forgive everything. I can do something today. I can have forgiveness, and tomorrow I'm okay. But if I keep repeating this process, do you want to take a chance when he comes that I'm on the other side of it? That's right. Mm -hmm. That's right. You better be walking right. It better be, these mistakes better be not not the thing you do all the time, but sometimes there are mistakes that happen. Get before the Father, get forgiven. Yeah. But don't play with it. That's mm -hmm. right. Don't play with it. As my mom would always say, don't play with it. There you go. <laughs> so, if you don't have it, 